Greetings, everyone. Welcome to Tiny ML Talk Series. Today, we have these two interesting topics for the talk. My name is Rajan Bhatt. I am Director of Machine Learning Division in Kixo, and I will be moderating the talk series today. To begin the talk, I would like to thank Tiny ML Talk sponsors. Arm is our strategic Tiny ML partner. We have other sponsors, Edge Impulse, Kixo, Sinsense, Deep Light, Maxim Integrated, and Reality AI. Additional sponsorships are available. Please contact BD at tinyml.org for more information. We have next series of talks available on Tuesday, December the 8th. We have our first speaker on December 8th, Ian Campbell from OnScale. He would be speaking about training embedded AI and machine learning using synthetic data. And our second speaker will be Sakya Singh Dasagupta. He is founder and CEO of Edgetronic INC. And he would be speaking on using AI to design energy efficient AI accelerators for the edge. Please contact talks at tinyml.org if you are interested in presenting the topics. And we will begin our talk for today. Our first talk is enabling neural network at the low power edge, a neural network compiler for hardware constraint embedded systems from Chaoshu ETA Compute. Chaoshu is bringing more than 20 years of experience in the advanced signal processing, machine learning, networking, semiconductor, and silicon photonics. He has received his PhD from University of Pennsylvania and master's and bachelor's degree from University of Science and Technology of China. He has more than 30 granted and pending patents on his credits. And he has worked for companies like Infi Corporation, BMC Sierra. And his research areas include speech recognition, noise robustness, feature extraction, and other general concepts of AI and machine learning methods. Ciao to you. Thank you, Rajin. So today, uh, my topic is enable neural network at the ultra low power edge, a neural network compiler for hardware constraint embedded system. My name is Chao Su, and I'm from the Ada Compute. So here's a brief agenda. So I will start with introduction, followed with talk about the challenge and of de developing this AI machine learning application in the ultra low power, these edge devices. Then talk about status of current status of the deploying of these type of applications. Then finally, we, uh, I'm gonna focus on talk about this uh, integrated approach to minimize this barrier to design this neural network for this type of devices, which is streamline this AI machine learning design from this idea to firmware. We call it Tensai flow. Tensai is in Japanese, it means uh, genius. So we pick these names. And then inside this Tensai flow, one of the key components is called the Tensai compiler. It's a neural network compiler for these ultra low power edge devices. I will focus on talk about how we design and define and architect this compiler to remove this uh, barrier and for the uh, AI machine learning application on these type of devices. Finally, it's a summary. So uh, neural networks continue to gain this interest for deployment in this IoT and other mobile and edge devices Usually people call this called AIoT. And there's a bunch of these different sensors which is collecting the data. And uh, then with this data, and uh, we develop people and uh, different companies and uh, uh, develop these uh, applications on these uh, neural sensor processors with some software development kits and then train the neural network with different libraries and create some reference design and using different development tools. Finally, deploy this type of machine learning AI applications on these very ultra low power devices 
to some processors and used to inference and the different uh, um, you know for the different applications. There's a lot of challenges of developing these AI machine learning applications in these ultra low power edge devices. There's some of them. First is a limited embedded memory for this type of devices. So this type of device usually is less than one megabyte this S run. Usually, you know, the device we are dealing with is only about 128 kilobyte or maybe 256 kilobyte in that range of the embedded S run. They also very limited storage and uh, such as embedded flash. And uh, so that around maybe uh, 256 kilobyte or maybe half Mac. And also this very limited computing speech is in the hundreds or maybe even 50 megahertz in that frequency range. And also the power is very limited, either powered by this uh, battery or it may maybe even with uh, some solar uh, power energies. The other things is also this currently developed this type of the AI machine learning applications is uh, has a lot of this uh, fragmented technology landscape, the different kind of a developed environment frameworks and uh, different hardware platforms. And particularly in this ultra low power uh, domain, there's all different kind of either microcontrollers or DSPs or uh, neural net process unit. So based on these challenges, here's a current status of deploying this AI machine learning application in the ultra low power, these edge devices. First, it's a take a very long development time. So that means either you have to use multiple these development frameworks for the training, for the inference, then either it's a, you know, depend on hardware you're using, you're using floating point, fixed point, and then there's a lot of hardware constraints such as uh, SRAM and flash and the running speed. And so this always bring up this, uh, you have to trade off between this power and accuracy. So that means, you know, model, the size is very limited in order to fit into this type of devices. And sometimes application requires this uh, higher accuracy because this small uh, model size actually limits this uh, high accuracy. So in that case, because of this accuracy limitation, a lot of these practical use cases are impossible in this type of devices. And a lot of people, you know, just like, okay, maybe they give up a lot of these uh, developments on these type of devices. But because of this IoT application and uh, a lot of these edge devices and uh, has to be used across different applications. So based on this kind of a background, and uh, we actually developed a way and uh, to streamline this design from the idea to firmware with this, uh, we call this TensorFlow and uh, within the company. So for this type, we start with this uh, tens TensorFlow. TensorFlow is a Google started and uh, then uh, this is a framework and starting from this design goals and uh, then training and taking the data set and generate the models with a uh, TensorFlow. And then also they create this uh, TensorFlow light network generations, basically it's a quantization and optimization for the models. Then we take this TF light models and uh, we put it into this Tensai compiler this Tensai compiler basically is doing the memory and speech power and optimization with the different optimized these, uh, kernels, DSP libraries, neural network libraries, and also the ex executors we developed for this multi-core multi these uh, hardware. And then this compiler will generate the code, which is essentially the inference code putting on top of these uh, hardware stacks and that on the bottom, this is the uh, embedded uh, applications and also this uh, uh, free art house for the operating system with uh, how we should hardware abstraction layers and libraries. And then finally, this code is compiled to these uh, hardware constraints, these uh, uh, hardware processors, such as one of, our, one of our processors. And then 
with this uh, different, this uh, wireless, uh, um, this uh, is a Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, this uh, radio uh, technology and connect to these uh, uh, cloud providers and then deployed it into the different IoT applications. So here's a TensorFlow overview. And basically we start with this, uh, you know, collecting the data, data collection from this uh, sensor board or with maybe other edge devices. We also co uh, cooperate with the uh, different companies such like uh, Edge Impulse and to collecting this data set. Then within the tens uh, TensorFlow, we trained and quantized and optimized, and then validate these uh, trained models. And then finally, we release this model, which is a quantized model, TensorFlow light models. And with this uh, Tensai neural net zoos, so basically this is a zoo means we qualified this algorithm is audio, video, people counting, this type of the application sensor, uh, gesture, uh, 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 these uh, recognitions and this type of algorithm already approved. Then we put it into these uh, TenSight compilers. TenSight compiler will take these uh, TF light models and automatically and doing these uh, hardware and software core optimizations to generate this uh, inference code and working together with this uh, bottom layer, this uh, 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 stacking like uh, middlewares like uh, AI kernels and free out also operating system, how and uh, also there's some sensor drivers for the hardware. Then working together with the cloud connectivity technology and putting together and uh, to putting this data onto these cloud providers and for the IoT applications. By doing this, basically is need minimal embedded coding required, everything is uh, automated and includes the training, includes the code generation, includes optimization and supporting multiple these uh, different type of the neural network like a CNN, mobile nets and uh, inceptions, some other large neural networks. And also depend on the hardware we're using and it's automatically generates this multi-core, this software so basically support is a multi-core within the one hardware platforms and usually minimal intervention from the user point of view. And the key is optimize these kernels and for the peak performance and efficiency and across these multiple cores. So the key, one of the key components is a TenSight compiler. Is uh, we spend a lot of time to develop this uh, neural network compiler for these uh, ultra low power edge devices. And, and so I'm gonna talk about, so start with uh, tens currently, the current version, we start with uh, TensorFlow light model files generate from the TensorFlow. And uh, so this allow user to train this network in floating point in TensorFlow to get the highest accuracy rate. Then using this ten TensorFlow light optimization to quantize and uh, using standard flow and on the PC, on the server and uh, to quantize these models. And then putting this TensorFlow Lite quantized model through this TenSci compiler and uh, with optimize this neural network kernels and also these uh, task distribution executors and running on the hardware and automatically generate this uh, inference code. And uh, this TensorFlow compiler we generate this embedded code directly from this TensorFlow Tensor Light models and for these ultra low power edge devices. So by doing this, really minimize this barrier for a lot of people. Try to apply this uh, different neural network technology to on this type of devices on the edge for the IoT applications. So here's some pipelines. And when we develop these uh, TenSight compilers, and uh, first, the training level optimizations, so such as like a hyperparameters optimization using this auto ML and pruning and weight reductions and quantization, these are all done at the network levels during the training. So this is not done this, uh, uh, on these uh, microprocessors or ultra low power edge devices. 
This is done on any of these uh, servers, PCs, and or some other type of the devices on the clouds, on your on-premise devices. And so you can use, uh, leverage all these different kinds of technology to do this level of this uh, optimization on the neural network site. And then finally, after you have these optimized these, uh, uh, neural network structures, and then we put it into these TensorFlow optimizations. So this optimization includes, and we take these trained neural network models and uh, for best execution on this uh, uh, tiny, these, uh, uh, these devices, which usually is multiple core and with a uh, very limited uh, uh, SRAM and uh, running uh, pretty low speed with low power. And we optimize this memory usage, optimize this performance and efficiency, energy efficiency. And also we enable these large neural networks with a different technology on this type of devices. I will talk about a little bit more and uh, for how we actually make this happen. So for this large neural network supporting, so such as, you know, some model weights is pretty large, cannot fit it into uh, uh, this limited uh, embedded flashes. So we can enable this, uh, um, this compression of these weights. And uh, also we can use multiple these type of devices and instead of one device, like if you look at on the right side, and instead of using one devices, we can use in, you know, two or three or even four devices. And compiler actually automatically split this model across these multiple chips. So that, you know, usually this neural network has multiple layers and this really can easily pipeline and running each of the different layers on each of these different devices at the same time. And uh, so we also support these uh, weights in the external flash. So that means middleware, which makes the storage transparent. And these pipelines, these operations using DMA and really mask all these uh, transfer delays. For example, on the right side, and uh, if each chip only has about half max this uh, embedded flash and also only have a 256 kilobytes SRAM, with these four chips together, we can support these uh, two megabytes, these weights, and supporting this 1.5 megabyte SRAM coding and also the, uh, the buffers. And with the uh, eight cores, each device has uh, one, two cores. One is a M3 and the other is a DSP cores. So by doing this really makes this uh, reduce a lot of barrier to develop this type of this uh, machine learning AI application on this type of devices. So with this compiler, and uh, we actually applied for the different type of these applications that includes the vision and sound and motion detection, this type of these applications. And so for the you know, vision side, that includes image classification like a CIFAR 10, and also this uh, person detection like a human, not human detection with a mobile net V band and with a small size of the image, 96 by 96, and also with a, like a vision person and a object counting, like with also with mobile net V1, a large image size like 256 by 256, and also includes a you know, keyword spotting, like a, a keyword spotting with, a, in our case, we use a guru type of the neural network, and also this activity detection, like a human walking, juggling, and uh, uh, standing this type of these uh, uh, gesture activity detections. So we can see this uh, based on this type of these uh, compilers and uh, we can run with the energy per inference and uh, you know, either we can do this uh, 20 inference per seconds for some you know, in CIFAR 10 and all the way to these uh, 50 you know, inference for the motion detection activity detections and for the people counting and people uh, uh, person uh, uh, countings, we can do one inference per second. And within the, uh, for the energy per inference uh, ranged from this, uh, you know, cup of micro juice and uh, up to, you know, four to five mini juice and depend on this, uh, you know, running speed and applications. This is very high efficiency and based on these compilers uh, to, uh, to do these uh, applications on these type of devices. 
And uh, this one, I'm just talking about this visual keyboard and uh, the human, not human detection. So this is similar to this uh, audio keyboard. And this is instead of using the audio, basically essentially is using the uh, images, like whether it's a human or uh, no human detect is in these pictures to trigger the future uh, next step of the actions. And so we actually, you know, running com comparison between the different vendors and are also on different devices and from us ECM3531 or 3532. And this uh, neural network is based on the Google, this uh, uh, mobile net V1, human, not human, and the devices. And the kernels either using some ARM senses based or maybe based on our optimized uh, uh, ADA compilers and running on M3 or M4, or maybe M3 plus the DS multiple cores. So we can see the uh, running at the different frequencies. The accuracy is very similar. And uh, also the, with, uh, you know, we can run about maybe with one second per inference or maybe, you know, five seconds, uh, five seconds and uh, per inference, depending on the speed we are running. And the energy we can see, you know, based on this compiler and versus uh, some other vendors, we can see about more than 10 X of this uh, energy efficiency with this compiler running on this type of devices. So for the CFAR 10, and uh, so, so basically it's a, a image characterizations. And we also compared uh, this compiler performance uh, efficiency uh, with one of these, uh, uh, with one of the ARM, this is uh, a uh, CFAR 10 uh, neural network with one of the vendors. And uh, so basically we can see about 200 X lower uh, uh, energy efficiency and with this type of the uh, compiler optimization includes hardware and software core optimizations with multiple cores. And image size is a 32 by 32 and has about 87 kilobytes is for the weights is a 25 uh, mac ops per inference, this type of the uh, number of the ops. We are also doing some of this uh, efficiency comparison with some custom measurements. There's two type of the neural network. And uh, we, when we do this type of the measurements, one is a smaller one on the top and the other is a little bit large a neural network with on the bottom side and uh, running and uh, running at the different frequency on the uh, X axis and on the Y axis is, uh, is power and inference time. We can see with this uh, compiler and to generate this uh, uh, automatic inference code, we can see dramatically improved in terms of inference time and also improves the uh, energy uh, efficiency and low uh, energies and running much faster on these uh, multiple cores. And the other application currently and we developing is called the people counting and for this ultra low power edge devices, you know, the people counting basically essentially is not just like a, a detects whether it has a human or not human within the pictures. Is uh, this can deploy into this entrance of these uh, conference rooms and the entrance exit of the buildings and uh, in the cafeteria or in the shopping malls. And particularly this, in this pandemic, these years, you know, social distance detections and in the production uh, fields and uh, uh, counting how many objects. So uh, on the right side, for example, in these conference rooms and automatically detect you know, whether how many people in the conference rooms, whether people getting and getting out. So th uh, this can be also used in the retailers, you know, on these uh, uh, stores and to detect on the shelf, whether, you know, whether it's a uh, storage uh, is need to be refilled or this type of applications. So we also create these uh, prototyping devices and uh, running uh, with a uh, different uh, uh, sensors so we create this uh, AI vision extension board stacking on one of our EVB boards, ECM3532, and has a different on this sensor board, you know, has a camera, multiple microphones, and also these light sensors, TOF sensors, and also some uh, infrared sensors. 
and also this uh, you know uh, with the low power these uh, ultra low uh, ultra low power devices multiple cores and uh, running uh, on this uh, EBB board. So this uh, uh, the currently we develop uh, this uh, neural network is based on this mobile net version one and SSD and detections. And there's some uh, preliminary, this type of the measurement, performance measurement results. And uh, uh, with, uh, with this, uh, you know, with this uh, uh, architecture of this, uh, uh, this network and with a different conf confidence IOU threshold, we can achieve about this 90% uh, of this accuracy rate. And uh, so this can be, you know, used as simple as this can be really scaled trade off between this uh, energy and versus uh, performance requirements. And depending on the image size, we can use a smaller size like a 96 by 96, this image, just to do whether it's a human or not human visual weak world can always can run, we always on type of applications and also can be used objects and person contents and with a large image size like 256 by 256, inference can be one inference per second or three inference uh, per seconds, depend on the running speed. So energy per inference that's, you know, in within, you know, one microjuice to five microjuice in that range. And uh, so based on this, actually, uh, this here's a quick summary for this type of these uh, compilers. And neural networks continue to gain this interest for deployment in this IoT and other mobile edge devices. But enable this type of this neural network on this type of this hardware really is a challenge. And uh, so we show how actually we actually working to take an uh, integrate this approach to minimize this barrier to design these neural networks for this type of devices by using this core optimization based on the hardware and software. And this hardware and software core optimization is to improve this energy efficiency and automatically generates inference codes. And based on this model, currently we support these uh, TensorFlow light models. And in the future, we're gonna support multiple different these uh, graph models and uh, on these uh, different hardware platforms. Okay, so here's uh, all my presentation. Uh, welcome for uh, any questions. Okay, thank you, Chao. It was very interesting discussion. I am looking at the question and answer stream here. The first question is that currently we are supporting TensorFlow and TensorFlow Lite. Are there any plans to support MATLAB generated models? Yes, so the, currently we are developing some of these uh, kind of conversions the conversion tools basically essentially taking different type of these uh, models, essentially is a uh, you know graph based models, then convert back into these uh, 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 the common models. For example, these TensorFlow light models or honest models, and so we can uh, support multiple different type of models in the future. Okay. Uh, there are some power consumption numbers given. Can this platform, can, can this pipeline support facial recognition under the same power consumption specifications? So currently for the VU vision application, we are focused on this two type mobile net V1. We're expanding to, the, to supporting different type of these uh, different neural network that's include the facial recognitions. And uh, so, but currently we have not prototyped that type of application on this type of devices. So, but that's kind of a, a future kind of plan at this moment. Does this pipeline support all TensorFlow operations? Uh, we plan to support most of these uh, TensorFlow light uh, kind of uh, libraries and applications kernels. And currently uh, mainly with support is a CNN type of the neural network that can be automatically generated and uh, from this uh, graph. We also support some of the audio like uh, application like a uh, glue gated uh, recurrent unit type of models. And uh, we also support some of these uh, like a uh, simple neural network like a uh, key, ma uh, key maps. And uh, 
So this can be really uh, expanded, very flexible by doing this uh, type of these uh, uh, compilers. You know, is this is a little bit different from these uh, accelerators usually building into this uh, hardware. For example, this uh, you know a lot of these uh, you know these accelerators is a CNN convolution based, and when the hardware is uh, is already developed and it's very hard really to change. And uh, only thing you can change is the size of the matrix, and also access these uh, memories. But this type of this uh, compiler based is uh, based on the hardware and really can has a lot of flexibility to actually improve the performance energy efficiency when we develop for different type of the neural networks. Okay, can we work with ONNX format that is open neural network exchange format? Yes, and currently there's uh, some other uh, open source tools can convert these uh, honest uh, these uh, models and into these TensorFlow light models, and uh, definitely we we also you know try to improve efficiency and do some optimization when we do this model conversions and based on the hardware and software core optimization strategy. Okay, the last question before we end this session is, does the compiler support other neural networks besides CNN? Yes, as I mentioned, you know, uh, the current compiler is mainly is working on our hardware and with the CNN based and also the blue and for the audio and some of the activity detection uh, simple neural networks. And this can be expanded very easily by adding optimized C kernels. And also I try to mention, you know, currently, although it's supporting uh, ADA compute devices, but this can be easily put into multiple different, uh, you know, hardware platforms. You know, there's different hardware platforms and chips, you know, they, they actually, you know, have multiple cores, not only like M3, M4, M7, M33, and also there's some MPUs and even GPUs. This also can be, you know, uh, incorporated into this compiler uh, framework and uh, to support because usually all these hardware de details can be uh, hide behind these uh, how levels, and uh, then can be easily, you know, uh, on top of these uh, uh, stacking uh, software stacking structures and should be easily ported into different hardware platforms. Okay, excellent. Thank you, Zhao, for the answers. Uh, there are more questions in the interest of time. We are not taking them live and we will be posting them on the forums. So Zhao can answer them offline and, and we can do the discussions on the forum. Now it's a time to thank our DynaML tech sponsors. Arm um, is our uh, strategic partner and uh, it is a software and hardware foundation for DynaML. You can see here. We have DeepLight. Uh, they use artificial intelligence to make other AI systems faster, smaller, and more power efficient. We have Edge Impulse, uh, which is democratization of the tiny ML for all the developers. Uh, they have Edge, de you know, it works with the Edge devices, testing pipeline, impulse, and data sets. Maxim integrated, uh, their new Max 78,000 implements AI inference at over thousand times lower energy than other embedded platforms. And uh, it can really accelerate the tiny ML never as, as it, it was never before. Kixos auto ML for embedded artificial intelligence. It's an automated machine learning platform that builds tiny ML solution for the edge using sensor data, uh, including embedded devices as small as M0. And uh, Reality AI is a AI platform for building tiny ML products. And SceneSense, which builds ultra low power sensing and inference hardware for embedded mobile and edge devices. They design real-time systems, which are always on for smart sensing, audio, vision, IMUs, and biosignals. 
Our next IML talks, uh, December the 8th, uh, Jan Campbell from OnScale would be presenting on training embedded AI ML systems using synthetic data. And Sakya Singha Das Gupta will be presenting AI to design energy efficient AI accelerators for the edge. Sakya Singha is from Edge Cortex. For opportunities for presentation in the TinyML, please write an email to talks at tinyml.org. Thank you, everyone.